target acquired. Arrest him! Do not impede our work. Is that understood, Al Haytham? Of course. I was only trying to help. Take him away! Looks like he used the Divine Knowledge Capsule. You mean, the Divine Knowledge Capsule did that to him? Oh, yeah. You mean how some researchers go insane after getting knowledge from Erminsoul? I've heard of numerous incidents of researchers in Satyavada life going insane. The state that man is now in suggests that this is a similar situation. This Divine Knowledge Capsule does appear to be linked to the gods, but beyond that, it doesn't seem anything like the rumors suggest. Did you hear what he said? World, forget me. What could that pop? If the mantra took him away, then that means the academia got the divine knowledge cap. Still, Paimon didn't expect the divine. As things stand, there is no reason for me to remain in Port Orm. Oh, we were so busy trying to find the divine knowledge capsule that Paimon forgot to ask you something. Sin Truthfully. I don't. Lesser Lord Kusanali appears to exist outside of Sumeru's entire administration. Most of Moreover, since the Academia possesses the Akasha, a symbol of our deity's wisdom, scholars have no reason to desire to make contact with the deity herself anyway. Uh, everything about Lesser Lord Kusanali is such a mystery! I'm heading back to the Academia. How about you two? Festival. Maybe we should head back, too. We've been rushed off our feet over the past few days, so maybe a little rest and relaxation will do us good. Then we'll part ways here, I'll hate them. Until we meet again. Hmm. Now, do I deal with this thing first? Or should I produce the report that the higher-ups require? Sub-Zero's festival, right? Let's hurry and find Dunyarzad! Paimon thinks she must be around the Grand Bazaar, since she showed us around there last time! There she is! Dunyarzad! We're back! Just as promised, Traveler and Paimon. I'm so glad that you two came back to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. <laughs> Indeed. The festival's tomorrow. We've been preparing for so long that I can't help but feel a little nervous. There's no need to be nervous. Paimon's sure that Lesser Lord Kusanali will feel everyone's gratitude. <laughs> Thanks, Paimon. I hope that everyone who comes to the fest. Speaking of which, um, did- Of course we went! A lot of things happened there. I see. Sounds like you two had another exciting adventure. If there is another chance, I would love to join. My lady, if you went to Port Ormos in your current state, we'd both be in for a lifetime of trouble. Yeah, You were eavesdropping! It's called covert protection. Keeping an ear out for what's going on around my employer is part of- It's alright, Dia. And festival's tomorrow. 
I've been doing nothing but causing trouble for you. Mm, even when you put it that way, it still doesn't feel right. Don't worry, my girl. <sighs> okay, fine, but only tonight. Tomorrow's a big day, and many no-good scumbags are gonna try to take advantage of that. Oh, uh, you two must be exhausted. I've already prepared a room for you to rest. Whoa, you're so thoughtful. Stabilize! Here we are. It's all... It looks really nice! <laughs> Not at all. It, just tell me more about your adventures when you next get the chance. That's Paimon's specialty! Paimon can tell you stories next time! Oh, if you don't mind, how about we all walk around together tomorrow? All of my friends will be working the festival, and Dia is still insisting on her covert protection. Yeah. Then let's meet at the nearby bazaar first thing tomorrow morning. It's a deal! Gonna... I may be too excited to fall asleep. Paimon started to really look forward to the Sub-Zero Festival, too! Oh, no, no. Thinking about food is just gonna keep Paimon up all night. The earlier we sleep, the better. Let's go... Go meet Dunyarzad right away! Gather! Traveler, Paimon. Good morning, Dunyarzad. We must have overslept a little. Not at all. I arrived early. Oh, today is finally. You've worked so hard for this. <laughs> you know it. Well, but shall we? Many vendors came out of the blue to support the event, and they insisted on covering costs themselves. Let's go give them some business. They paid for everything out of pocket. Oh, sounds like they're not in this just for the Mora. <laughs> they all said that contributing to a lively festival atmosphere is more important than money. Especially since we don't often get to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. Ooh, they're selling food over that way! Let's go take a look! This is a stall offering foods from the Haft Mewa feast. Oh, you could tell straight away. I th Mushrooms, flowers, so... What's the it's another Sub-Zero's festival tradition. People used to set their tables with seven different foods. Generally speaking, the most common selections were foods like Rukushifa mushrooms, lunar lotuses... So, the Sub-Zero festival is a vegetarian holiday? <laughs> you don't have to be a vegetarian to enjoy the spread. Wait, but if that's the case, if Sumeru uses vegetarian food to represent the Dendro Arc, then wouldn't the Pyro Archon's festival be full of food like... Roasted fowl, juicy meat... Oh, Traveler, we have to go to Natlon as soon as possible! <laughs> I hope your wish comes true one day, Paimon. Thanks! Alright, how about we also check out some of these other stalls? Dear customers, would you like to try your hand at alchemical divination? What's alchemical divination? Right? I thought the same when I first heard about it. So, how does it work? It's quite simple. After you give me any two alchemical reagents, I'll use them to perform a random... Sure sounds random! That is precisely what we need. After the transmutation fails, your one and only diviner here will interpret the remnants. Well, according to Lesser Lord Kusanali, everything is interconnected. 
and all that occurs can be traced back to fate. You could say this is a pearl of old wisdom. Why does everything sound so much more credible when Dunyarzad says it? Are you... So that's the true wisdom behind it. This young lady sure knows her stuff. So... Okay, one moment. Hmm... It's the moon. Paima wants to take a look too! Hmm... Generally speaking, the moon signifies... It means... Uh... Wait a moment. Is he really looking it up in a book? Oh, I remember now. It means illusions and... Illusions and lies? Yes. But this book says that if you trust your intuition... He's not even trying to hide his book anymore. Naturally, fate will only ever show you the begin. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning. Guess that was still pretty interesting. They say the sub Zeros festival was very lively a long, long time ago. Large flower carriages used to parade through the city. As they headed towards Port Ormos, people would throw flowers, candy, and liquor all along the way. Dunyarzad's eyes are sparkling right now. Oh, I wish I could have seen that spectacle. But if you ask me, I'm sure Nilu's dance of Subseras will be just as impressive. Attention! Soldiers! Fall into formation if you want any Yalda candy. It's a weird guy with a weird head. Hey! It's Dunyarzad! <laughs> Miss Dunya, in the few short days it took to... Uh, um... <coughs> All right, little soldiers. Take you... Yes, yes Knight Ferris! Uh, just what is going... <laughs> Ferris, the Knight of Flowers is another sub festival icon. It's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsor. As are we to you, V. Oh, <laughs> not at all. Whichever one... Uh... <laughs> that is the... Ooh, those are... And there's also Lizard Tail and... Huh? What's up with those two flavors? Only Kabuto is a little spicier than Lizard Tail. Dunyarzad, you, you tried them before? Hmm. Traveler, help Paimon pick. It's all right. Paimon believes in you. I also believe in your intuition. Great. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Attention. That's unfortunately lavender melon. The Sunsetia-flavored candy was in box number four. How about this? The most important thing is that everyone has a good time at the festival. So please, take both boxes. Really? Thanks a lot, Knight of Candies! It's Knight of Flowers, not Knight of Candies. <laughs> Paimon really wilted the carriageless Knight of Flowers. They all basically sound the same. We got our candy, so let's... Oh, uh, actually, I just remembered that I left something behind. Can you come with me to get it? Dunyarzad, you probably forgot because you're so excited about the subsidy. <laughs> uh, how embarrassing. Too late. Who knew the little... I know, right? Hey, wait a minute. Puss! Oh, that most certainly is. We're in luck. She's walking right into our... Those Aramites don't look like they're a... Who are you? I don't believe the Homayani... <laughs> That's right. We haven't received any of their mora, but... They're 
Hey, did you scumbags even consider that the Homiyanis might have hired a merc that outclasses you? You're... Dia! Dia the Flame Mane! Don't speak so disrespectfully. My fa- Don't worry about it, my lady. <laughs> Traveler, take Miss Junior- No! We're gonna stay and help! There's too many of them! Mm, you're right. Please be careful, Dia. Don't waste your time, worry. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. You sure you're okay? No. I'll be fine after some rest. I'm more worried about Dia. After all, none of this would have happened if I had... Yeah! Don't worry. My lady. Traveler. Found ya. Dia! You... Any more of them? Or rather, did anyone... Dia, your arm... Oh, this? Ah, uh, please, let me take- Come on, it's not- Hold on, you said something about a new great- Uh, about that. Well, I- It can't be. The anonymous donation that was used for the venue's final- <laughs> uh, Hey, Miss Dunyarzad, I wasn't- <laughs> Okay, making your employer cry won't affect your- <laughs> You're so unreasonable, my lady. <laughs> Thank you very much. Don't be like that. <coughs> Are you feeling unwell again? My lady, your condition. Traveler, can you take her somewhere to rest? Truly. I'm sorry for the trouble. few moments and I'll be good to go I didn't realize you were concerned about it I guess I shouldn't continue to keep it a secret I was actually born with Elazar it's terminal now can't believe it's Elazar oh uh, you've already heard of Elazar in that case you probably know about its severity Sumero's current medical advancements still haven't been able to find a cure the disease's progression can only be delayed through environmental therapy. Dunyarzad. There's no need to be sad. I've always lived with Elazar compared to the simple fact that I'm afflicted with this. I know that my family loves me dearly. Did you know? Before I ran away from home this time, the world outside of my home didn't even... Since I was a child, all I could do was... I'm sure my family's worried and disappointed in me for running away, but I... I just didn't want to have any regrets. I wanted to meet other people. To me, there's n not to mention the incredible this way. When my final day does arrive, at the very least, many people will remember that I once existed in this world. Right? Uh, as long as you don't forget Paimon, Paimon also won't forget about you. Uh, no. Even if you forget Paimon, Paimon will still remember you! <laughs> oh, thank you two so much. To be honest, Lesser Lord Kusanali gave me the courage to do all of this. If it weren't for her encouragement, I wouldn't have taken that first step. Thanks. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. Oh, right! Isn't it almost time? Huh? Almost time for what? Isn't the dance of sub Zeros about to begin? Nilu will recreate that legend, and with that, my- And what are we waiting for? Yeah! Solidify! Stabilize!
Were you not aware that the law prohibits this type of performance from... Over there! Someone's yelling at me! I think I just saw the Academia's grin. But the dance of sub -Zeros is one of... The sub -Zeros festival. The law also prohibits the private hosting. If you continue to resist, we will have to order an... In the Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. How... The Academia was originally responsible for the sub -Zeros festival. But they failed this responsibility for me. This is a hard pill to Art. Dance. Aren't you ashamed of pers- Our Archon created the utopia that is Sumeru City for all scholars who sought validity, verity, and truth. While people like you wish- No! I believe that our Archon- With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. When we return, have the scribe dra- Understood. I will inform- hmm. The sub -Zeru's Festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your hearts. Nilu, are you okay? Oh, Dunyarzad. Yeah. Let's go somewhere the Academia can't- Or we could get people to- Nilu, it's alright. But you've been looking forward to the dance. It's okay. It would be too risky to continue the sub- If you say so. Then yes. Okay. It's a promise. Hyman can't believe this is how things turned out. Those heartless geezers. It really is okay. There's nothing we can do about it. <sighs> Still. to make the next sub -Zero's festival a success, but Dunyarzad is running out of time. Yeah. All connections have been secured to construct the most stable framework possible. The project has entered its most critical phase. Power has begun to flow from... Not at all. Uh, you seem kind of tired. I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Shall we go? Let's start with the stalls over there. Sure! Uh, Traveler? Why are you Ooh, they're selling food over that way! Let's go take a look! This is a stall offering foods from the Hoft Maywath. You are quite well informed. They're all plants. Actually, what is the Hoft? It's one of the sub Festival's traditions. People used to set their tables with seven different foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. This appeared to be in the form of the moon. Really? I thought it looked like some kind of food. Hmm... The moon signifies... Hmm... It's escaping me for now. Wait a moment. Is he really looking it up? Oh, right. <laughs> it means illusions and lies. But if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. Understood. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. Guess that was still pretty interesting. So, where to next?
right, soldiers. Now that you have your... Yes, yes Knight Ferris! What's going on? Ferris, the Knight of... <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want... Uh, what? <laughs> Ooh! And there's also... Uh. Hmm. Traveler, help! Great! These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Ah, excellently chosen. Number four is indeed Sunsetia. Ha-ha! <laughs> Paima bet you had incredible luck, and Paima was right! Huh? How's that possible? It's obviously random. Maybe we didn't sleep very well last night. Or maybe we slept too much. Oh, it, sure. Huh? Where are you going? You're just... A feeling of deja vu? Oh, Paimon knows what that is. It's when you feel like you've already experienced whatever is going on. In that case, Paimon also felt something like that today. So, why'd you run here in such a hurry? So that's it! You're intentionally doing things you usually wouldn't and seeing if you still get that same feeling of deja vu! Welcome, you two! Are you here for lunch? What would you like to eat? Got it! You don't look like you're from these parts, but I... Coconut charcoal cake? Isn't it that... that burn thing that didn't look tasty? Oh, Paimon understands what you're trying to do now. You'd never normally or... That... thing? Uh... Isn't this... going a bit too far? Ha... How was it? The look on your face is telling Paimon that it tasted awful. Then... you mean... Impossible. We were just talking about how gross it looked. So, would this be a case of taste bud deja vu? Paimon also gets the impression that we've been here many times, even though we are regulars. Um, how about we go out again? sitting by yourself on that bench over there. What a coincidence, Dunyarzad. We mean... Oh, I ran into some kidnappers just now. But thankfully, Dia... Kidnappers? Oh my good... I'm okay. Dia's arm got scratched. <sighs> That's a big... Not at all. I've always been like this. Excessive physical exertion, besides, no matter how amazing today may be, it is but a single day. After however many more days, 
My Paimon doesn't quite follow you. And Paimon feels like something's really got you down right now. It really is fine. I don't mind. Huh? Did something happen? Dunya is odd. Have you ever felt deja vu? You know, like when you've already experienced something. Deja vu? No. But my days have been the same for years now. Even if I were feeling deja vu, I suppose I would already be used to it. Oh, Paimon sees. Then, is it... It's almost time. Huh? Time? Nilu's dance of sub -zero. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do... When we return... Understood. Uh, the Sub-Zero. Nilu, are you okay? Oh, Dunyarzad. The Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. It's okay. There's nothing we can do about it. But you've been really looking for- It truly is unfortunate, but- True, but- <sighs> The next festival. Wait, what did- uh, No, nothing. A Paimon can't believe what those heartless geezers did! <laughs> did Dunyarzad already- Exhaustion. Same year. That's why Paimon stopped thinking about it halfway through the. Ugh. Then, how about we settle in and get a good night's sleep? For now, we can chalk things up to exhaustion. We can do more thinking tomorrow. Observing a modest drop in the output of Nyana energy, but values still remain within normal parameters. Continue to monitor the variances in the data, and find the cause as soon as possible. <laughs> Why does Paimon feel so tired after so much sleep? Uh, anyway... Good eye. Good morning, Dinyarzad. Sorry. Not at all. Huh? Paimon thinks you sound. I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Great idea. Let's get going. Traveler? Thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can enjoy the sub -Zero's festival. Oh, are you interested? Hmm, not much. <laughs> it's not that simple. Each box contains a rat. Hmm, they are. And there's also lizard tech. Huh? What were those hmm. No problem. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Oh, -ho, I like your confidence. No hesitation at all. Oh. Ha ha! Paimon knew he always 
that incredible luck? Um, Diamond's not really interested in the other... Oh! Uh, wait. What? He was right about all of them? That couldn't have been luck. How, how is this possible? I packed all those boxes this morning, and they've been sealed ever since. You couldn't have known beforehand. Mind reading? X-ray vision? Or some kind of magic trick? Tell us what's going on! Since when did you get superpowers? Traveler? Hey, where are you going? What's going on? Did you see something? Us leaving Dunyar's side without let... Traveler? That's... Here. Why are there two Dunyarzads? You already know that this isn't your first sub Zero's festival, don't you? I'm sure you already know how to use this. A knowledge capsule? Where did you get it? What's inside? You should use it too, Paimon. Uh... You... You know... Paimon? Well... This seems kinda sketchy, but... Paimon feels like... This is what we should do. scrambled try your best to remember this isn't the first time we've met and i answered that question a long time ago uh, let paimon think oh it's coming back meeting you was the real catalyst for restoring our memories and the knowledge capsule was just your means of showing our minds the way uh what about everyone else why are you only helping the two of us? Your sense of deja vu is stronger than everyone else's, yes? As for an explanation... You two received the blessing of Dendro. 
and you also have special sensitive constitutions. It was as if a single sheet of paper was separating those memories from your consciousness. A familiar question. I think this is the seventh time you asked that. As you can see, she isn't doing well. You probably sensed it too. The Dunyar- that first Dunyar Zod is in front of you right now and... She doesn't have a lot of time left. <laughs> Looks like you're almost done sorting out your brain. Oh yeah, I'm Nahida. Good, you passed the test. What's happening? You can awaken our memories, and you seem like you know what's going on. Oh, wait, please don't tell Paimon, even you don't know. Everything in this world runs in a loop. This cycle is called a samsara. You, me, and everyone else are all stuck inside a one-day samsara. As for the truth, that's on you to find out. If you were told the truth instead of discovering it yourselves, it would literally blow your mind. I don't know how you'd be after that. I can only give you surface level help, like bits of information and subtle hints. For the rest of the time, I'll be doing all I can to slow down Dunyarzad's illness. She looks like she isn't doing well at all. Her illness gets worse after each Sub-Zero's festival. If we can break out of the samsara, I might be able to save her. But as things are right now, she's just a small bird in the sky that's about to lose its last feathers. You sure love to use weird analogies. <laughs> analogies are wonderful tools. They let you use existing knowledge to understand unfamiliar things. Okay, so, with what you know so far, what do you think the truth is? What's happening right now seems to have happened before. This feeling has been getting stronger and stronger. The moon, illusions, and lies. What do they all mean? The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? We've already experienced the sub -Zeru's festival many times, and the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. My mind feels exhausted, even though I haven't done too much thinking. What is going on? We've already experienced the sub -Zeru's. That should be it. And the flow of time is endlessly cycling within one single day. That should be it. And the flow of time is endlessly cycling within one single day. 
The moon, illusions, and lies. What do they all mean? A time loop. <sighs> You've given similarly wrong answers in the past. Still the wrong answer? A simple time loop can't explain some of the phenomena. You two are still missing a lot of information. Unfortunately, I can't give you any more hints. <coughs> Dunyar is odd. The Subzerus Festival is happening every day, but that doesn't mean we can waste an infinite amount of them. Hurry and find the truth before today's festival ends. Let's think about our current situation. To save Dunyarzad, we have to escape the Samsara of the Subzerus Festival. And to do that, we need to figure out what's happening. The truth. Nahida rejected the idea of a time loop, so... We must have missed something, right? Paimon's memories say that we've already done this many times, but... Let's go talk to people again. Hey there! Hey, it's you guys again. Where's your cultured friend? She... Uh... I see. Did you come back to buy something? I guarantee the freshness of my products. I harvested them from the forest just yesterday. Huh? What brought this about? I hurried back from the forest yesterday, and I'm selling protos here today. I haven't felt anything strange. Mm, um, to put it another way, if you really, really think about it, was yesterday truly yesterday? What kind of philosophical nonsense is this? Are you two daydreaming? Didn't you know that no one dreams in Sumeru? Go somewhere else if you want to find someone to daydream with. <laughs> uh, he actually has a point. Is this a dream? Is everyone dreaming? Hmm. True. It's so weird that people here don't dream. Why is that? Anyway, if this all really were just a dream, we would have woken up a long time ago. Oh, it's you two. Was my divination so accurate that you felt compelled to compliment me in person? Ooh, I knew it! I told you, the god's divination is highly accurate. You're really excited about this, huh? That's exactly why we came back. Help us better under- Uh, help- So, you're admitting that you don't have a clue- Anyway, what kind of situation did you get into? Hold on a second. I thought you guys just lost your wallet or, or fell for a scam. What you just said... Are you serious? Does that kind of thing actually happen in real life? I knew you weren't going to believe it. Marvelous. Truly marvelous. I believe you. Recall the interpretation of your divination. The moon, illusions, and lies. It really felt like an omen. When you say it like that, the divination does sound like it's related to what's going on. Can you read any more into it? I believe that the Archon's revelations are never more than vague hints. Anything more specific is beyond the reach of mere mortals. The book only says, if you trust your instincts and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. So that's how it is. Looks like fortune-telling is just fortune-telling.
fortune telling. It's no good for practical problems. We haven't made any progress. Who else can we talk to? Hmm, Paima remembers that we tried talking to her a couple of times, but she always thinks we're playing pranks on her. You think she'll brush us off again? Yeah, if we tap into Dia's strong sense of responsibility as a mercenary, then she'll definitely take us seriously. Hmm, at this time of day, Dia's probably just finished beating up those kidnappers. I'm fine, my lady. Perfect timing. Both of you are here. Paimon, traveler. You came at just the right time. Listen, there was a dangerous get. Huh? You saw? You want the traveler to take Dunyard's odd somewhere to rest up while you check to see if there's still any kidnappers. How did you know what I was going- We need to say something convincing. People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange fin- Dia sold her greatsword to raise additional funds, and then she was injured because she wasn't used to her new weapon. The moon, illusions, and lies. My mind feels exhausted. Tell her, Traveler! I didn't tell anyone about that. Including Miss Dunyarzad, you couldn't have known. And just now, you literally took the words right out of my mouth. What's going on? All right, so this is the situation. <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe what you just told me. First, let me make something clear. Most of us desert dwellers might not be the scholarly type, but we do have basic common sense. She's quieter than usual. Uninterested in anything and... Yeah, she isn't the same as before, but her parents said that this is how she was like at first. Huh? At first? I don't quite understand what you're all talking about. I'll go rest on the bench. My lady, are you angry? <sighs> all right, I'll give you the bench. I told you that it won't help to bring anyone here. We just wanted her to see the real Dunyarzad's condition. The real Dunyarzad? Uh, it... Huh? Uh, I told you that you two are special. Other people can't see me or Miss Dunyarzad here. Hold on. Over there. Is that? Wow. How perceptive. Does she have invisible antennae? Miss Dunyarzad, she's... she's lying down here, isn't she? How's she doing? Her condition's really bad, and she's basically in a coma. How did you know she was here? I... can sense her aura. I... <clears throat> there are also lingering feelings of something like regret. Or disappointment. Do you believe us now? The Subzero's festival has been repeating itself. So, you think the sages are behind this? Yeah, they've always been against us. 
Wouldn't surprise me if they're using the Akasha to intentionally repeat the Subzerus festival as a sick joke. Hmm. You have a point. Aside from the Dendro Archon, the Academia Sages are the only ones in Sumeru who could pull off something like this. Maybe there's more to the Akasha than we know. Right. Didn't you awaken our memories using something that looked like a knowledge? The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. A Gnosis could do that? No wonder the Akasha is so magical. It's being powered by the Gnosis of Sumeru's Archon. So, uh, this Nahida you mentioned, what did she say? She said and Paimon quotes, The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. Compiles the wisdom of the entire populace and grants knowledge to the people? Hmm, wait. I get the grants knowledge part. That's what people have always used the Akasha for, but compiling the entire populace's wisdom? How does that work? Did she mean that the sages enter new knowledge into the Akasha? Oh, yeah. That sounds about right. What do you think? People in Sumeru don't dream. Okay, Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace. Okay, Nahida said the a My mind feels exa- What's happening right now, see- that doesn't sound right. I need to carefully think things through. People in Sumeru don't dream. My mind feels ex- What's happening right now seems to have happened before. This feeling has been- That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. You mean- the Akasha is causing our mental fatigue? Huh. Now that I think about it, my head's been feeling unusually heavy. When the desert dwellers set off on their quest for knowledge, a sage once said, knowledge always comes at a price. Compiling the entire country's knowledge. You think the Akasha pulled a 180 and is extracting information from us? Who knows? The Akasha can put knowledge into our heads, so... Who's to say that it can't also poke around in there? We don't know any specifics. What's the point of doing something like that? Just think about it. If you could combine the knowledge of every single person in Sumeru, this hive mind could make breakthroughs and problems that even the smartest geniuses can't crack. An excellent deduction. And the analogy comparing Sumeru City to a massive brain? <sighs> I love it. In that case, we should take off our Akasha terminals right away. Maybe that'll solve this problem. Yeah, I was only wearing this for show in the first place. Didn't expect the sages to cook up such a conspiracy. <sighs> Mark my words, when this is over, I'm getting evidence and exposing this whole thing to the public. How does everyone feel? Huh? What is it? Oh, that! Paimon knows what you're talking about! It's a single soft beep that sounds like it's coming from the Akasha terminal! The sound of a beep? Could it be a prompt tone for when the Akasha is operating? That's probably an important clue. We weren't using our terminals, but we heard a beep anyway. Traveler, did you hear that? I heard it too. Our ears aren't messing with us. There was definitely a beep, but we took off our Akasha terminals.
Phase runtime has exceeded its expected length. At this rate, there may be casualties. But we cannot lose all of our progress. Remember <laughs> Good. You adapted quickly this time. We definitely took off our Akasha terminals last night, but we still heard that beep. Why is that? <sighs> but now we can at least confirm one thing. The Akasha definitely has something to do with what... Oh, Paimon doesn't get it. Why would the Akasha... It's extremely difficult for lab rats in an experiment to understand why they're being treated the way they are. If we're lab rats, then what are you? Nahida, you've never told us anything about your... Hmm... I guess... I'm the moon. The moon? Wasn't that the result of our divination? Anyway, knowing who I am won't help you get closer to the truth. So you should focus on other things. Don't get distracted and miss any clues. <sighs> okay then. Dia helped us a lot yesterday. Ah, there you are. I've already taken care of those kidnappers. My lady, did you get hurt? What's wrong? Why are you both gawking at me like that? You... you didn't get hurt this time! Huh? What do you mean, this time? Why are you so surprised that I managed to get out unscathed? Those kids were amateurs. Shh! How did you know about my greatsword? I haven't told anyone about it. Please, don't... So Dia's lost her memories after all. Anything strange? You already know that I got a new greatsword. Hmm, if I had... It's as if I've already used it to fight a countless number of... You're saying that although you don't remember using it, your body... That's right. Both mercenaries and warriors... Traveler, what do you think? No clue what you two... So you want us to take ten years on... How did you know what I was gonna... Uh, uh, forget. Whew. It's finally night time. Aside from... Hmm. Listen, Nahida, we found out that Dia got out just fine today. Do you think the samsara has been broken? Really? Good job, Anna. Hey, what kind of an answer is... Tomorrow will come. Everyone assumes this is common knowledge, but the only way you can know that for sure is if you experience tomorrow. How many todays has it been? Is it possible that today will be followed by yesterday? Does tomorrow truly exist as anything beyond a made-up concept? It's even possible that this entire world is a lie, and the history of the whole world has just been one endless sub -Zero's festival. Okay, okay, no more! Paimon's brain is already shut down. <laughs> That's why it makes no sense to waste your energy thinking about things you will learn tomorrow. Get some good rest. You know, use the bathroom and flush your anxiety to pee away. Uh, uh, huh? Hold on, what did you just say? Did Paimon hear you correctly? Huh? People always say they feel a sense of relief after they take a duke duke. That's why I suggested you could try... Uh, it's so strange and so against 
common sense that... Paimon's at a loss for words. You were sounding kind of smart just a minute ago. Yeah. Even though it's happy and lively at the Sub-Zero's festival every day, it feels like it's been a long time since we've really gotten to relax. Continue the harvest. Compared to what we stand to achieve, these sacrifices are trivial. We're still in the same day! Nahida, you already knew last night that we didn't break out of the Simsar- <laughs> Would there have been a point? You would have spent the night with new worries, with tomorrow still out of reach. In that case, you might as well rest within that brief moment of hope. An opportunity like that doesn't- Paimon thought that Duke Duke did that! Oh, whatever. Guess you were- <laughs> Of course. In the time we've been together, you two have been everything- uh, Paimon's flattered and everything, but maybe you're taking things a little. <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had asked you to solve this puzzle, you two are still the only ones who can see me and sense my presence. In other words, if you weren't here, I may as well not exist. That's why you two have been everything to me. Nahida's talking about confusing stuff again. Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. So, Traveler, did the new clues yesterday help you gain a new understanding of the situation? Huh? Why are you scrapping your previous theory? Oh, yeah! You're right! Gosh, how did we not notice that? In a simple time loop, People's physical conditions should also reset. So, what's your new hypothesis? The moon, illusions, and lies. What did they all mean? Mercenaries rely heavily on muscle memory. And Dia was able to use her experiences to avoid injury in later samsara cycles. The beep is a prompt tone for Akasha operations. We s Okay, Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to op- We've already experienced the sub -Zerus festival many times. If all our memories of a day are erased at the end of that day, then we would unwittingly relive the same day again and again. The beep is a prompt tone for Akasha operations. We... Mercenaries rely heavily on muscle memory. If all our memories of a day are erased at the end of that day, then we would unwittingly relive the same day again. <sighs> oh! Then the beep we hear every night could just be indicating the deletion of our memories! That's why when we wake up, everyone thinks the sub zeros festival hasn't happened yet! It, but muscle memory can't be erased! That's why... Hmm, a brilliant deduction. Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong. To put it simply, it's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a firefly in the night. You lost sight of its true nature because you focus too much on your perception that it glows. That isn't simple at all! Why don't you go talk to Miss Dia again? You might learn something new. Right! She did help us find... There you are. Really took me a while to find you. As expected, Dia also didn't get hurt today. 
get hurt. Why would I? Well, you're still getting used to your new greatsword. Huh. Truth be told, I also think it's pretty strange. It just suddenly felt so familiar in my hands and... Uh, wait a second! How did you know I got a new greatsword to begin with? I didn't tell anyone about it. Traveler, could you explain the situation to her today? Paimon's gotten a little sick of doing it. Oh, that works! What happened to you guys while I was gone? Did you get brainwashed by some cult? Um, don't think too hard about it. Just take what we're saying at face value. All right, then. Let me get this straight. You're... Yes, your memory's being a... Then I'd have to disagree. Ha oh? Why do you think that? If we've actually been reliving the Subzerus Festival day after day, then what happened to the things we used? The money we spent? The f common sense says my wallet should have emptied itself. They could use the Akasha to record what everyone did that day, and then use the city's resources to replenish everything! It's not very likely, but it's also not impossible. No, it is impossible. You have proof. <sighs> you two are surprisingly... Come with me, Miss Dunyarzad. Paimon can't believe it's Dia who wants to show us something this time. Two days ago, we were the ones taking her to see Dunyarzad. This is it. Huh? This is a wooden training dummy. See those marks on the dummy? Those are the result of several days' worth of practice. Let's say the sages didn't replace it every day. Shouldn't it be hacked to pieces by now? That's true, but... Then the sages would have had to reproduce every mark I left during previous training sessions. I'm a professional fighter. My martial school has always emphasized the importance of refined control. The force, angle, and entry point of each strike is calculated and deliberate. It's just as they say. Each swordsman has their own unique style. And even the same swordsman can't make the same cut twice. Is it really impossible? What if they use some fancy machine to carve every single mark? People often say that a camera's photo can never replace an artist's painting because the former has no spirit to it. The same thing applies here. At a mere glance, I can differentiate carved marks from the results of combat training. Whew, I hope that cleared things up for you. Anyway, it's getting late. I should escort Miss Dunyarzad to Nilu's stage. See you later. one <sighs> but at least we've reached some other conclusions in the meantime yep that's true so can we think of any new ideas right now strange paimon feels like everything's been strange lately huh leaving the city you're right it's really paimon can't believe it did we miss this because we're tunnel visioning too hard on our other theories? Or because we're just too tired? How about we go back and ask Nahida? Huh. early today did you find it? sort of we're mostly sure now that we're not in a time loop and we also aren't in the real world but at the same time we have a new question hmm leaving the city as far as i remember you've mentioned your plans to do that twice before we did but we don't remember anything what happened after we talked about those plans? What did we say when we got back? <sighs> Let me think. I don't think you ever actually told me what the outcome was. Oh, it's probably more accurate to say that both times, you never came back the whole night. But you two sometimes stay out the entire night anyway, so at the time, I didn't think too much about it. 
It is true that sometimes we lose track of time during our investigations. Before we know it, it'll already be the next day. But still, neither of us remember anything about leaving town. Really? That's kind of strange. In theory, I should have already awakened all your memories. Yep. Something here's definitely fishy. Let's get to the bottom of this tomorrow. Our memories are back! Uh, about that... Well... Where should Paimon begin? Traveler, aside from your memories that were just restored, I have another message for you. Listen to it and you'll understand. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzeru's festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. Traveler, you should be missing two days' worth of memories. Paimon will fill you in. It's time to carry out our plan from yesterday! Okay, let's go! We don't have many more festivals to waste. Her <laughs> Why can't we leave the city? What is the academia up to now? Don't ask me. It's not like I can tell you anything. This is a direct order from the Grand Sage. I have a real emergency. That's your problem. Make sure you make a request in advance next time. But, but it's not like you can just predict business matters in advance. <laughs> it looks like the Academia already announced a lot. Let's go and quest. Hello, sir. Why can't... Here we go again. Don't, we just received an order that no one is allowed to enter or exit Sumeru today. They didn't tell us anything else. Angering me won't get you anywhere. It looks like he really doesn't know. If we can't get anything out of him, let's take matters into our own hands. This is a good spot, and the guard- Huh? Why? Are you going to leave Paimon behind? But- What if things get really weird out there and you get into some trouble? Then, Paimon won't be able to help you. Oh, Paimon knows that Paimon can't do much, but we've always been together. Mm. Okay. Promise Paimon that you'll come back as soon. And please, be careful. what you were saying. <laughs> Paimon doesn't care! Paimon wanted to go look for you, but you also said that Paimon should stay! Paimon was so worried and so scared the entire day! <gasps> okay. Paimon will forgive you. The most important thing is that you didn't actually disappear. Oh, Paimon was so scared that you had gone into another world. Okay, Paimon, can you tell us your perspective of what really happened yesterday? Hmm, I see. Using two people's different perspectives. After that, you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you... Disappeared in an instant. No way! Paimon was 
watching you with the fullest attention. What's your perspective, Traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of this? I guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So, if we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside! Something like... a message? D don't look at me like that. I'm... I'm not used to being stared at. Well... Okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? Give me some time and take care of Dunyarzad for me. Yep! No! I'm done. Here you go. What? Isn't this just an Akasha terminal? I made some little changes. Akasha terminals are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it could connect to any node. To make something like this? Nahida, you really know the Akasha like the back of your hand! Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. We'll never know until we try! At least, let's go then! Let's expose those sages! Uh, all right. Paimon isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday. But... Paimon still isn't happy about it. Okay, see you tomorrow, Traveler! That covers everything that's happened so far! <sighs> Yes, although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay, now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzerus festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. It's one heck of an info dump! It sounds like you left the Sumeru city space when you set foot outside of the walls! But everything looked completely normal when Paimon was looking out from the inside! That's unbelievable. There's another part here. We only received it last night. These spaces have been disappearing one after the other, absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now! Those spaces are actually... Uh, uh, why did the message end right there? Probably because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Oh, right! Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said, even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? 
All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. Was that space actually the real world? But wouldn't a real space just randomly disappearing like that be catastrophic? My impression is that each day in this samsara only ends at the sound of that beep from the Akasha. All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. Was that space actually the real world? But wouldn't a real space just randomly di- My impression is that each day in this samsara only ends at the sound of that- Oh, so that's what it is! After the sound of the beep, the final space, the Sub-Zero's festival, also disappears! and we're taken to the next day. Later on, Traveler also mentioned a bunch of new spaces materializing behind them. Do lots of new spaces appear every day? Paimon's head is spinning. Well, consider this. For all the horrors of the Archon War, at its heart, it was just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, Maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow, the Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. Hey, where are you going? The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay, then. I'll see you later. Have you figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away! Awesome! What is it? Paima wants to know! Oh, wait. You're back! I've been waiting forever for you two! Are you ready to take your sub exam and graduate from the festival? <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? Okay. Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. We've already experienced the sub festival many times, and... the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. The moon... illusions... People in Sumeru don't dream. What a... We are all in a 
dream. It isn't that the people of Sumeru don't dream. Rather, the Akasha is taking their dreams from them. And those spaces remind me of... dreams. Like the one I had in the Avidia Forest. Except these have no sign of human presence. People in Sumeru think they don't dream. But the truth is, the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when he was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now. Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate. It is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace. And it grants knowledge to the people. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace. It is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to... It is the manifestation of the God of Wit. Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But... Is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So, in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions. The real story is that the sages from the Academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the Samsara? The beep is a prompt tone for Akasha operations. We still hear it every night. Those spaces kept disappearing before my eyes. But as soon as that beep sounded, many more spaces materialized. Those dreamscapes kept vanishing. But as soon as that beep sounded, more new spaces appeared. The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god. My mind feels exhausted. We've already experienced... I can't seem to co- Hmm... Hmm... We've already experienced the Sub-Zeru's festival. Those spaces kept disappearing before my eyes. But as soon... The beep is a prompt tone for Akash. Those dreamscapes kept van- the Grand Sage said, Go... That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound... That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. Correct. The Akasha is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the sub festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the sub festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha, so, 
This is like a dream factory. And the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay. So that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything. All right, last question. Who am I? They say that alchemical divination is the Dendro Archon's divine revelation. So then, if Nahida has referred to herself as the moon... Now that I think about it, wasn't illusions a hint that we're all dreaming? Now that I think about it, wasn't illusions hinting at... <laughs> so you noticed. Uh, I thought that one would be the hardest question. That's why I put it last. <sighs> that wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you, is all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny. Thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. You asked me this question before. My answer was, it would literally blow your minds. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. Firstly, this dream we're in is completely based on reality. People have already experienced this Subzerus festival, so it would be very difficult for them to find anything that strikes them as surreal. Secondly, you're probably wondering why people don't have any memories from earlier Samsara, right? That's because people don't remember their dreams most of the time anyway. And in any case, their actual dreams are being taken away from them by the Akasha. So whenever they wake up in this dream of the Subzerus Festival, they don't remember anything from their previous identical dream. That reminds Paimon! Traveler had a dream when we were in the Avidia Forest, but couldn't see what it was about after waking up. Is that an example of what you mean? Yes. Only after receiving the Blessing of Dendro can a person gain the Dendro Element's dream-enhancing power. That explains the feelings of deja vu. Meanwhile, everyone else has no idea that they are in the Subzerus Festival Samsara, while their dreams are stolen from them over and over again. Can humans really keep dreaming forever like this? Will it ever end? And if so, when? You might say your mental fatigue has already answered this question. Eventually, there's only so much that people can tolerate. Especially those whose health is compromised to begin with, like Dunyarzad. This relentless exploitation takes an even harder toll on them. People's lives are at stake here, and nobody knows a thing! We've got to put a stop to this! I know, right? Why did they have to base this dream on my birthday? Could it really just be a coincidence? Even you don't know the reason? Wow. Now that's strange. The Academia Sages are determined to harvest lots of dreams in a short time, no matter the cost. They have to be up to no good. Traveler, do you have any information? Those spaces remind me of... dreams. Okay, Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a no- The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. So 
celebrate the birth of that god? Could it mean... I know, right? Why does it even you don't know the reason? The Academia's Traveler, do you have any... That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. Celebrate the birth of credit me? Deceiving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the Subzerus Festival Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? Ugh. Nahida's talking in riddles again. Oh, we're out of time. I'll tell you how to break free of the samsara tomorrow. See you then. Everything. Should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> hey, what's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way. Are... are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. Paimon can't believe it. Wait, so what about that other Dunyarzad? Just what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarzad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarzad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarzad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarzad. Puppets are stiff and can't copy a living person's vitality. And you know, speaking of which... The old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her! Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she's still... Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival. It's... Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. I'll... Don't be like that, Nahida. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad. To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the Samsara as soon as... Great, but how do we do that? Although the Subzerus Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So... Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you'd naturally assume that food is on it. However, 
If you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind, and the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack. And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker. It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me, uh, during this time... I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the Traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Narian go! Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this samsara need to end. Huh. <sighs> Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish. Yeah, saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. Paimon's wondering, do you think the sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Huh. That's true. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? Oh, that would make sense. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is a... Let's go ask him some... You're back. You left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? Everything's fine. Just... Um... It's a little hard to explain. An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you... make a wish? You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub Zeru's festival tr- Less questions! More wishing! Okay. My wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. Oh. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her. So, you have a crush on Dunyarzad? <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to ha What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her Knight of Flowers for the rest of my life. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but... <clears throat> That was pretty embarrassing. Okay, I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh, you're... What? Faki? Uh, sorry, but only one portion of Yelda candies. <laughs> 
<sighs> nice try, you two. Uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. It seems like everyone who... My lady, step back. That sounds like Dia! Oh, right. Huh? But Dia can handle them! Hey, Traveler! Oh, it's you. Great timing. Please take... Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You... Ugh, fine, all right. Knock your... Anyway, watch yourself. So you got yourself some backup. <laughs> Suit yourself. This is order. Solidify. Disappear. Useless. Worthless. both. Dunyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. Oh, and speaking of her, Paimon just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub-Zero's festival before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the Sub-Zero's festival. Yeah, even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll... This is the place! Hey, the windows are unlocked! Okay, uh, Paimon's gonna take a peek inside. temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Dunyarzad wrote all of this, even though she was also busy preparing for the Subzeru's festival and had all her health problems to She must have wanted to give this to us as a gift on the day of the Subzeru's festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, but now that we know, we Hey! Where are you off to now?
That's Dinyarzad's puppet. Traveler? You must be exhausted. Come to think of it, we've been stuck in this place for a really, really long time. Heck, even the last time we were chatting happily with Denyarzad feels like an eternity ago. Simon still remembers when we were sitting here, and the way her eyes sparkled when she- There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. That was what the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean- Yes, Traveler. Oh, so she's still just a puppet. But just now, how come... What? Where are we going this time? If you continue to resist, we will have to- The Grand Sage is already- oh. uh, Traveler? Uh, you don't have to get involved- Traveler? Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get- Wait! Have they been scared stiff? Oh, of course! If this is the Sage's plan, they wouldn't put themselves through this! So they're just. What is this? What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? <laughs> like I said, they symbolize the goddess of flowers. It's just a shame that all the real Padisaras went extinct after her death. Yes. The Greater Lord brought forth new Padisaras in memory of the goddess of flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful shade of purple. Ah, that beautiful shade of purple. Aren't these flowers real Padisaras? But didn't you just say all the real flowers went to extinct after the- Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, uh, huh? You guys are acting... Hmm. Hey! They disappeared! So Nilu's the host! Body sorry, it's just like the example Nahida told us. People assume there will be food on a plate, and Nilu assumed there would be real potty saras in the flower pot. So when you saw the flowers, but if we want to end the samsara, we need the host to become. How should we make Nilu? Am I dreaming? Huh? <laughs> so I'm right. Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzeru's festival? Wrong guess, but you aren't completely wrong either. Uh, the point is, what made you think this is a dream? 
As far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the first sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dendro told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. Yep, but in the part you heard, he hadn't become the first sage yet. There's more to the story. His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the first sage. As if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, he mastered all the knowledge he could comprehend. Afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must... The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed. As if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife lying next to him said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Have a safe journey, my love. In the end, the first sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City and founded the Academia. So, the first sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? He n Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Archon. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. That's a really interesting connection. I see. Well, it just so happens that today's sub -Zero's festival is almost over, too. Since we're in a dream, let's make this final dance of sub -Zero's as beautiful as we can. Dedicate this to our god, the dance of sub -Zerus. I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Milo's dance. Traveler. Oh, Paimon feels like she's been asleep for the longest time. Paimon's head feels super heavy. Paimon thinks it was the Sub Zero's. Can we finally escape from the Sub Zero? Some quick, take off your Akasha terminal. Huh. 
Well done, Traveler and Paimon. And thank you, Dunyarzad, for organizing this upstairs festival for me. I'm sorry, who are... Dunyarzad! <laughs> You're okay! Oh, don't scare us like that! Oh, a uh, Traveler Paimon. I have something of... I just had a dream. When I saw Nilu perform... Did you save her? It's a really long story. We shouldn't disturb her. Her consciousness is still weakened. Let's chat somewhere else. first. Mm -hmm. After we parted on the last day of the subs among the countless dreams, I found one that was growing fainter and fainter. This proved my suspicion. Once Dunyarzad could no longer bear the Akasha harvesting her dreams, her consciousness began to dissipate. But this also meant it escaped the Akasha's control. Such a small fragment of consciousness can't last for very long, though, where both will gradually fade until they completely disappear. I used all the power I had to keep her dying dream alive as long as possible, but it still wouldn't have lasted for much longer if it hadn't been for you two breaking the some. So it looks like we did manage to save Dunyarzad in the end! Not a moment too soon! Huh? Why are you two smiling so happily? I thought you'd be so moved that you'd start crying. Hmm. <sighs> I need to spend more time observing human emotions. Both are fine. Everyone reacts differently. All right. You two must have a lot of other questions for me, right? After all, you saved my faithful believer. As your reward, I will answer any and all questions. At the Avidia Forest, there was this incense that made the Traveler fall unconscious and dream of a huge tree and a red sky. You also heard someone's voice, right? It said world and forget me. Yeah, so you do know. We've been wanting to ask you what that was about and if the red sky was related to Conria. Hmm, it seems like the Traveler established a connection to Ermensoul. That was a message left by Greater Lord Rukadavata's residual consciousness in Ermensoul. Perhaps her last memory before she died. As you two probably know, Greater Lord Rukadavata disappeared after the disaster in Conria. The timings of these events do line up, so your suspicions are reasonable. A message from Greater Lord Rukadavata? We thought it was from the Scarlet King! The Scarlet King? That god who died even longer ago? Uh, some present-day desert dwellers still worship him. You probably just heard some of their conspiracies. Okay, so... Uh, I still haven't managed to decipher it. Even the Akasha isn't currently capable of doing that. Greater Lord Rukadavata's residual consciousness in Ermensoul seems to be contaminated with something that has a very dangerous aura to it. Many devoted scholars go mad as soon as they connect their consciousness. I've warned the Academia about this many times, but people still keep falling victim to it. But I believe this is the key to saving Ermensoul. That's why I've kept trying to decipher it. So the tree in the vision was Ermensoul? But even if you can't figure out... The Traveler wasn't affected after coming in contact with that consciousness. I've never seen anyone like that. 
With you here, we may have a chance at deciphering it. No, we must decipher its secrets. I've already eliminated all other factors that might affect Ermansoul. This puzzle has life and death at stake. It could determine Ermansoul's fate, as well as to that's. To be accurate, I'm using the Akasha as a medium to occupy Catherine's consciousness. <gasps> How did you do that? Poor Catherine. Uh, does this mean you can also occupy other people's consciousnesses? Theoretically, I can enter anyone's mind as long as they're wearing their Akasha terminal. The Akasha is the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. As Lesser Lord Kusanali and the first Akasha terminal, my consciousness has always been linked to the Akasha. I've always respected my people's free will, so I've never actually occupied their consciousness. When necessary, I just borrow this bionic Snishnayan puppet. Uh... Oh, hold on! Did we just learn some deep, dark secret? So Catherine is... No. No wonder Paimon felt something was off about her. What about your own body? Why do you need to borrow other people's? Don't you live in the sanctuary of Suristana? That story begins a long time ago. After Greater Lord Ruka Devata disappeared, the sages found my newly born self and took me back to Sumeru. At that time, I was young and weak. The sages kept me in the sanctuary of Suristana, ostensibly for the sake of protecting me. But I've hardly heard from them since. However, I do understand that they had hoped to find Greater Lord Ruka Devata instead of me, a symbol of her passing. So, the sages basically put their new Archon under house arrest? In some ways, they aren't wrong. Greater Lord Ruka Devata was omniscient and omnipotent, and I... I'm still... Yeah, you got a lot of believers. Just look at the sub -Zero's festival! <laughs> Think trying to find a way to save Ermansoul is my life's mission and top priority. Every once in a while, I will also take up the duties of the God of Wisdom and enlighten a lost soul here and there. Doing all that should be enough. There has never been any big problems with the Academia's governance of Sumeru. This is the first time I've seen them step out of line. I wonder what caused them to go down this path, and what they hope to achieve. Even though the city's residents haven't noticed anything strange, if the Traveler hadn't broken the sub Samsara, the situation could have become dire. I tried to do some investigating in the Akasha, but I couldn't find anything suspicious. I think they're deliberately trying to- Oh! That reminds Paimon! In Gundarvaville, there was a sage who had invited Tainari to join some kind of project. Regardless, I need to first investigate the sage's motives, make things right, and punish them if needed. You mean how the Akasha stops you from having dreams? Yeah, it's been such a long time. It's not that no one noticed. It's more like no one cared. Ultimately, it's all rooted in the sage's misdirection. Misdirection? The sage has convinced everyone to believe that being unable to dream is a sign of rationality and wisdom. Not dreaming is a badge of honor in Sumeru, even if the truth is that their dreams are being reaped by the Akasha. With their propaganda in place, the sages can maximize their use of the Akasha to facilitate their research. Besides, Greater Lord Ruka Devata must have created the Akasha in... <sighs> anyway, the pers by now, even those who never use Akasha terminals find it too shameful and embarrassing to talk about their dreams. Got it! I hope my answers were satisfactory, seekers of knowledge. <sighs> to be honest, maintaining Dunyarzad's fading dream took a lot of mental energy. I think I may need to rest for a while. Oh, and you don't need to worry too much about the Sage's activities for now. The Akasha won't be able to conduct another project on the scale of the sub Samsara in the immediate future. Go and get some sleep. <laughs> what a relief. Oh. Hmm? Traveler? Paimon? Why am I here? Do either of you know? I... Maybe you were sleepwalking. You know you can't wake up a sleepwalker. We, uh... We happened to walk by, so we thought we'd wait.
wait for you to wake up. I see. Huh. I should visit my maintenance personnel sometime. Oh, I'm fine. I better go. Snezh nine huh. boys. Useless.
Welcome. Get your spices What's here. So great We've got about all kinds. Nine toys 